And downloading Linux Mint 13 Cinnamon Edition 64-bit because I tried the Mate Edition and I didn't like it all that much so I'm going to try 64-bit. That is not what this video is about though. This video is about a rather peculiar issue I ran into where I would burn a uh, Linux ISO to USB stick using UNET Booten, U N E T B O O T I N. That's an app a bunch of you are familiar with for writing bootable images to USB, but the damn thing wouldn't boot. I don't know why. It just would not. So I figured it might have been something uh, that had to do with the app more than the actual uh, ISO, because I'm sure the ISO was good. So I did some research on this, and in the Ubuntu documentation they mentioned this thing called Win32 Disk Imager, which you can download from launchpad.net, so I did. Uh, if you actually search for Ubuntu Image Writer, as in Ubuntu, and then Image Writer, all is one word, I-M-A-G-E-W-R-I-T-E-R, -E you'll find this web page, and then you can just get it. Now all it is, let me just bring this up. I put it in a folder on my desktop. Uh, there's no installer, there's nothing of the sort. You just run Win32 Disk Imager, and I am in Windows 7 64-bit, runs fine in it. So you launch the thing, and then you just choose the image file and choose the appropriate um, drive letter that your USB stick is, and then you burn the, not burn, uh, write the image. Now the only thing I noticed is that when I did this is uh, Windows would not recognize the USB stick until I reformatted formatted it afterwards. But that was okay because the point is, is that it would boot. So when I wrote the image with the disk imager, it would boot. When I tried UNET Bootin, it didn't boot. I couldn't tell you why, but if you do encounter that issue, excuse me, that issue, just get the disk imager instead and use that. And if you find it does not, uh, your USB stick doesn't recognize in Windows, whatever. The point is you can boot from it, and then um, later on you can just whack the partitions on the USB stick and then just reformat it for Windows use again. So uh, yeah, that's it. The disk, Ubuntu Disk Imager, for those of you that are having problems booting from USB, from an image written from within Windows, uh, grab it. It worked for me, and hopefully it will work for you too if you're encountering that issue. Okay, this is a uh, follow-up video. It's going to be in the same video I just did a second ago, but the download finished, so I wanted to show this. So you'll see a, a, a rather sharp jump cut in this, but that's okay. Anyway, so I have the Linux Mint 13 Cinnamon ISO image, and I have it selected here in Win32 Disk Imager, and it happens to be that my 4 gig stick is drive letter E, my 8 gig is drive K, and uh, I have it blanked out on purpose. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and write this image and go for it to drive E. Writing to a physical device can corrupt the device. That's actually important to note because it will corrupt it in Windows and I'll show how in a moment, but the point is it will boot afterward. Are you sure you want to continue? I do. Okay, so now it is at the point where it's actually writing the data to the USB stick. Now, I have to mention a few very important things while this is taking place. Okay, first of all, absolutely do not unplug the stick while you're doing this because you can royally screw it up. You can screw it up so bad as a matter of fact that it can become unusable. So you don't want to do that. Um, if you have other things running, like I'm doing a screencast with this right now which is actually kind of dangerous <laughs> because I'm writing video data as I'm capturing this and I'm also writing to a physical device, the USB stick, uh, as I'm doing this. So, not smart. You should not have other stuff running while you're going about this. 
Uh, the next thing to note is that now this is a 4 gig stick so you automatically know it's an older USB stick but it is not so old that it's unusable. I mean you see the write rate at about six and a half megs a second which is average for an older 4 gig stick. The newer ones can do 12 meg and above and whatever. Anyway the point I'm making is that if your uh, USB stick is really old like 2 gig, you know, one of those really old ones and you've used it a bunch of times, chances are writing an ISO to it in this fashion is not going to work. I mean it will finish the job but when you actually try to go and boot from it, it may try to boot but things will go corrupt all over the place. So basically speaking, if you have a USB stick which is 8 gigabyte or newer, you should be fine when uh, pushing over an image like this. And let's see if there's anything else I want to say. No, we'll just wait until this is done, which it almost is. This is a full DVD size image, so it goes through pretty quick, right? Successful. Now here's what happens afterwards. I'm going to exit the app. I'm going to go to computer. Now it does show it. I cannot access this. I'll try to open it up. It asks me if I want to format it. Nope, don't want to format it. But the point is, is that the uh, it says not accessible, blah, blah, blah. It is, in fact, accessible, and I can boot from it. And this is what I meant before when I said when you're done with the stick, just go back into Windows and double-click it and just format the thing, and you can use it for Windows again. But for the time being, it is sort of kind of corrupt in the Windows environment, partially because I changed the file format over from a a removable USD to a HDD, pseudo HDD type of thing that would take way too long to explain but that is essentially what happens and that's why I can't access it in Windows right now, the contents that is. So, but when I reboot and I'm done using it, like I said, I can format it and then I can use it in Windows again so there you go, that's what happens.